हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नेहा एंड दिस इज द मॉर्निंग टेल्स फॉर सेप्टेम्बर फोर 2019 सो अ लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग्स आर देयर टू बी डिस्कस एंड एज वी कैन ऑल सी दैट इन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड वी हैव द न्यूज दैट अ हाई लेवल ग्रुप ऑन हेल्थ सेक्टर फॉर्म्ड बाय द फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन सो द वन इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन हियर इज दैट इट वॉज फॉर्म्ड बाय द फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन and this high level group has recommended to declare right to health as a fundamental right on the 75th independence day in 2022 so interesting right that the right to health is also being considered to be declared as a fundamental right by the government so now what is the implication of declaring it a fundamental right if the uh, right to health is declared as the fundamental right then it be will become the duty of the states to fulfill it irrespective of their budgets so now what the second amendment or the recommendation this high level group has suggested so it has also suggested to separate training for medical teachers and service providers and prohibit medical teachers from practicing as private professionals so this step is being taken or this recommendation has been made in order to make the availability of medical service qualitative now the third suggestion of this committee is that the report says that there should be a common exit exam for undergraduate medical students qualifying for both public and private medical colleges so do you remember that uh, the national medical Com commission bill 2019 also proposes a common exit exam what is it called it is called next so it was quite in news when the bill was passed and this next exam is the national exit exam for the students who are qualifying their medical basically mbbs so this report is also saying the same thing but it is proposing the common exit exam for uh, undergraduate medical students qualifying from both public and private medical colleges so this is the new addition that this uh, committee is recommending now the fourth and the most important recommendation of this committee is that that it has recommended to shift the subject of health from state list to concurrent list so now guys i hope that you all are aware of the three list which are provided in the constitution state list union list and the concurrent list so if the subject of health is transferred from state list to concurrent list then the union government will also get power to frame laws about health and these laws will be binding upon states also so now a very important question that we are missing here is who is the head of this committee quite an important question right so our first question of today is that only who is the head of high level group which suggested to declare right to health as a fundamental right so this is what we have discussed so the head is randeep guleria and let me tell you that he is also the chief of aims so aims is the all india institute of medical sciences now where is the headquarters of aims it is in new delhi now what does this picture say i have taken this picture from economic times and let me zoom in so this picture is saying that the government is mooting performance based framework for incentivizing states what is this performance based framework so basically the states would be encouraged on the basis of their performance second thing is 3000 to 5000 small hospitals will be required in tier 2 and tier 3 cities so it is not very much important from exam point of view this is important that the committee has recommended government to incentivize private sector in order to set up infrastructure so basically what does this mean it means that the high level group or the committee has recommended the government to incentivize the private sector to set up the infrastructure required for the health sector and now the second question of today is quite simple that where is india's tallest air traffic control tower established so it has been recently established at indira gandhi international airport and where is this located it is in new delhi now what is the purpose behind establishing it so the purpose is that the government wanted to enhance the safety and efficiency of air transport management services so basically in order to increase the efficiency of air transport this air traffic control tower has been established third question is 
विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विल अवॉर्ड पी एम मोदी फॉर द स्वच्छ भारत अभियान सो इट इज द न्यूज ऑफ द डे दैट प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी इज अगेन फेलिसिटेटेड विद अ न्यू ऑनर एंड दिस न्यू ऑनर इज बींग गिवन बाय बिल एंड मेलिंडा गेट्स फाउंडेशन नाउ द अदर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी डिस्कस्ड हियर इज दैट दिस अवॉर्ड विल बी गिवन टू हिम वाइल ही विल बी विजिटिंग न्यूयॉर्क फॉर द सेवेंटी फोर्थ जनरल असेंबली मीटिंग ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशन सो दिस इज द मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यूज दैट यूनाइटेड नेशन इज गोइंग टू कंडक्ट इट्स जनरल असेंबली इन न्यूयॉर्क एंड दिस वुड बी द सेवेंटी फोर्थ सेशन ऑफ दियर जनरल असेंबली एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विल बी विजिटिंग इट इन सेप्टेंबर इट सेल्फ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विद विच इंस्टीट्यूट हैज एमेजॉन पार्टनर टू लॉन्च द नेशनल आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस रिसोर्स प्लेटफॉर्म so this is important because nowadays india is taking a plenty of initiatives to promote artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things etc etc so to encourage the new learners of artificial intelligence this national artificial intelligence resource platform has been established and it has been established by amazon in association with iit kharagpur so what is the purpose of this platform this platform will provide learning and information to the students who are willing to learn about in artificial technology now other important information about this national artificial platform so this initiative has received its funding from ministry of hrd and it is a part of national digital library of india project so now guys the task for you is that you have to mention that when was this national digital library of india project launched in the comment section next question quite an important question so where is the first ever joint naval exercise between asean and usa being held so first of all this is the first ever joint naval exercise and it is being held in south china sea so this is the south china sea this whole area is south china sea this is china taiwan vietnam philippines and malaysia so it is uh, this area which is disputed and now the other question is what is the name of this exercise so the name is quite simple it is a u m x a for asian u for usa m for military x for exercise so quite easy right now the question for you is that you have to tell me that which all countries are members of asean we have already discussed that in one of our morning tales previously so do not forget to mention your answers in the comment section below that how many countries are a part of asean and which all countries are a part of this organization next question which institution is anchoring the samudra yaan mission of india quite important mission friends from exam point of view so do listen to this news very carefully so recently this samudrayaan mission has been launched and it has been launched by national institute of ocean technology to send at least 3 humans to the seabed at a depth of 6000 meters now this depth will become more important once you know the actual depth to which a, sub a submarine can dive so the uh, maximum depth to which a submarine can dive is 200 meters and the samudrayaan mission is targeting to send at least 3 humans by 2021 to 2022 at a depth of 6000 meters in the ocean bed to study mineral resources as well as the oceans so the other important information about this news is that the samudrayaan mission is a part of deep ocean mission of ministry of earth sciences so the samudrayaan mission is quite similar to gaganyaan mission and now the question for you is that what is the timeline to which india plans to send humans in space through its gaganyaan mission next question is so this is important but i know that it has been in the news wildly most of you uh, out there who are listening to the morning tales are already aware of this big bank merger which is going to take place in the public sector banks but still there are some integrities that we need to discuss here so the question is asking that how many public sector banks are being merged by ministry of finance so basically there are 27 public sector banks and the government is planning to merge 10 public sector banks into four units 
and after this merger this 27 number will be reduced to 12 so basically after this merger only 12 public sector banks will remain in india that was the very static part of this question now let us discuss the integrities of this news so now what is the purpose of merging these banks the purpose is to consolidate psbs for strong national presence and global reach so as we can see that in this picture one is anchor bank column one is amalgamating banks so anchor bank will be the chief of this merged unit and we have the four anchor banks first is punjab national bank which is expected to become the second largest bank by size once it amalgamates with oriental bank of commerce and united bank of india so this is the prospective size of these banks after their merger so the second merger is of canara bank with syndicate bank and after this merger this most unit will become the fourth largest psb of india third merger is of union bank of india with andhra bank and corporation bank and after this it will become the fifth largest bank of india and the last merger is of indian bank with Allahabad bank in which the anchor bank will be indian bank and it will become the seventh largest bank and this is the business size of these prospective merged entities now the other important fact to be discussed here is that these banks these most banks will be using these banking softwares after their merger so this pnb merger will be using the finacle enforces finacle core banking system so this will be used by pnb obc and union bank of india canara will be using the iflex union bank of india uh, will be using the finacle and uh, indian bank and Allahabad bank will use the bancs banking software so this is a uh, very static information so friends here we can see that there are the bank business size of all the other banks is also given so we have sbi bank of Baroda, bank of india uh, cbi that is central bank of india indian overseas bank yuko bank maharashtra bank punjab and Singh, sindh bank not to be discussed in very detail you can have a screenshot of this slide in order to revise these things at a later stage also now next question now apart from this the banks are also asked to form a risk management committee and to combine the nomination and remuneration committees now the other important part is that the government will give around 55,250 crores to these 10 banks as part of its recapitalization program so the next question is which of the following country is not among the organizers of namaste pacific event namaste pacific event is very interesting now why is this so because this is an event organized by four pacific countries which are australia fiji new zealand and papua new guinea so these four countries have jointly organized this namaste london program or event in new delhi to showcase the pacific culture to india so the answer to this question is Estonia, which is not among the organizers of this event. This is a static question for today. So in which field is Dada Saheb Falke award given? If this picture is clearly visible to you, so you can easily guess the answer that the answer to this question is option E, film. This Dada Saheb Falke award is very important in the arena of cinema. So do remember this thing. The next question is where is Hirpura Wildlife Sanctuary located? So friends, this is the question which I am leaving on to you that you have to mention in the comment section below that where is this wildlife sanctuary located? So it's time to conclude our morning tales for today and thank you so much guys for watching our video and if you have gained anything from the video so do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more informative videos like this. Thank you so much.